Snastruck. Every so often on the Super Nintendo subreddit, we get a post asking what the fastest games are to complete. And that's not to be confused with speedruns or no death runs, those are different categories altogether. With fastest to complete, we're just talking about the games that aren't too long and aren't too difficult to be completed in less than an hour. So here's a big list of Super Nintendo and Super Famicom games that don't require 40 hours of your life and don't require a 160 page guide. They're accessible games that can be finished in a reasonable amount of time. I'm just going to very briefly mention each game, and I'll try and cram as much genre variety here as I can. I'm basing each playthrough time based on my own experience and what's most commonly seen on Let's Plays and Long Plays. Oh, and the game actually has to be good. I know you can beat Barbie Supermodel in 15 minutes or Captain Novelin in 20 minutes, don't ask how I know that, but neither of those games are worth your time. The obvious place to start is with Kirby Superstar, since that's pretty much 8 different smaller games in one cartridge. Spring Breeze in particular can be finished in like 10 or 12 minutes. It's a streamlined remake of the original Kirby's Dreamland for Game Boy, just with the Superstar game mechanics and a two-player co-op option. Most of the other games in Kirby Superstar fit the criteria as well, with the exception of the Great Cave Offensive and Milky Way Wishes. Those usually take over an hour to complete, but Dynablade can be finished in about 30 minutes, and of course Gourmet Race is just a race consisting of three levels, which can be finished in no time flat. Another easy recommendation would be any of the Capcom Disney games, especially Bonkers, Mickey's Magical Quest, and Goof Troop. Bonkers has five levels with two stages each, and it can be finished in about 30 minutes or so. What really helps, of course, is the sprint mechanic, so of course that's going to help the game move along quickly. Mickey's Magical Quest has six levels that are each pretty long, and I admit this one gets off to a bit of a rough start, the first level is a bit boring, but once you're able to unlock new costumes with new abilities, the game really gets fun. This one's a bit longer than the other games on this video, but it's definitely on the easy side. Goof Troop is a bit different in that it's a top-down adventure-style puzzle game, but I'll be damned if this one isn't a great playthrough that just flies by. There's tons of items and weapons to use, the puzzles are all intuitive, and the gameplay kind of reminds me of Bomberman in a sense. But this one's a great game, both from a single-player standpoint and with a second player helping you out. Anyway, there's also stuff like Aladdin and the Magical Quest sequels, but yeah, anything that says Disney and Capcom on it, it's a quick but fun playthrough. Let's switch franchises over to Warner Brothers with Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bust Loose. This one's made by Konami, and again like Bonkers, this one has a sprint mechanic which speeds the pace of the gameplay up as you're able to climb walls and bash into enemies. This one's a bit of a longer playthrough because of all the mini games that pop up after each level, but it still can be finished in less than an hour, and it's a breeze to complete. Next, there's Super Adventure Island. Now, normally if I were to recommend a game just in general, I'd recommend Super Adventure Island 2, because it's more of a wide-open adventure-style game with upgradable weapons and armor and a world map to explore. But for the purposes of this video, Super Adventure Island is perfect. It's a simple, straightforward platformer that can be completed in about 30 minutes. Just run to the right and kill anything that moves through five worlds with four stages each, while keeping your meter up by devouring any and all food that comes your way. If you want games with more of an action slant, there's Run Saber. This one only has 5 levels and can be completed in something like 35 minutes, but just to warn you, it does get pretty damn tough in the last couple levels. Thankfully, however, Run Saber is 2 player co op, so that helps mitigate the difficulty a bit. But yeah, if you're looking for more of a challenge than the games I just listed while keeping the playthrough time somewhat short, Run Saber is a great way to go. Let's stick with action platformers while taking a look at a couple that never left Japan. Games like Psycho Dream. It's made by the same people who made El Viento and the Valis series. There's six levels here, and it can be completed in around 35 or 40 minutes. And like Run Saber, this one can get pretty difficult. But as you can see, what really stands out about Psycho Dream is its visual style. There just aren't many other games that look like this. So if you're looking for a quick playthrough featuring more of a surreal atmosphere, then go with Psycho Dream. This game is also English friendly, so you don't have to worry about a patch. Same with the GoGo Ackman series. Sure, there's some story you'll miss out on, but there's still three quick, English-friendly playthroughs offering a ton of gameplay variety. These games kind of remind me of The Legend of the Mystical Ninja or Goemon games. Not as good, but in the same vein, if that makes sense. And each of the three games can be completed in less than an hour without breaking too much of a sweat. Let's switch to beat-em-ups, and I only really have one pick to fit the criteria. Many 16-bit beat-em-ups tend to drag a bit, with playthroughs that can last for over an hour of essentially doing the same thing over and over. That's why I'm going with Captain Commando, a perfectly solid beat-em-up and a decent enough arcade port, and it's a game that I think has fallen between the cracks over the years. It's a fun single-player or two-player co-op playthrough that won't last you longer than 40 minutes, and what makes it fun is the supremely bizarre backgrounds and enemy design you'll be going up against. I mean, jeez, just look at this guy. 
Another easy pick would be the Star Fox games. The first Star Fox especially if you stick with the easier middle path. It's six stages that can be completed in something like 30 minutes. Your mileage will vary with the other two routes, especially with a tougher third route. Star Fox 2 on the Super Nintendo Classic is another game where you can just stick with a path and go straight to the end. The gameplay is a bit different with ground levels, puzzle solving, and much shorter levels in general, but it's still a fun playthrough that's less than an hour. Another rail shooter that fits this criteria is Hyperzone. This is another one of those games that doesn't really get talked about enough. Okay, maybe that's because this game is ugly as sin. But still, this is a simple pick-up-and-play game with 8 levels. And yeah, this one gets pretty tough toward the end, but it can be completed in about 40 minutes or so. Let's move on to shoot 'em ups and as much as I'd love to recommend Space Megaforce for this video, it just goes on too long, clocking in at an average of about an hour and ten minutes based on my own playthroughs and what I see on YouTube. A better fit would be something like Aero Fighters. Yes, this cartridge is infamously expensive, but if you have a flash cartridge, this one is well worth playing. There's seven stages divided into two parts each, and if you find the action too intense, you can have a second player join you. This is easily one of the best shoot 'em ups on the Super Nintendo, and it can be completed in about 30 or 35 minutes. You know what, let's stick with shoot 'em ups a bit longer, so I can make amends with an old game I've slagged on a couple times, Darius Twin. Yeah, it's kinda slow, the speed is a bit imbalanced, but hey, it does have some good qualities going for it. The art style is really cool. I mean, how can you beat these demon space fish? There's five varieties of weapons, all of which are useful, and the game isn't too difficult, and it helps that you can add a second player to the action. Darius Twin is also reasonably short for a shoot 'em up, featuring six levels and some huge boss fights that can be finished in about 30 minutes or so. Finally, for shoot 'em ups, there's Cotton 100% for Super Famicom, and this is another game where you don't need an English patch. There's eight levels with a unique art style for each, and it's a playthrough that can be completed in about 40 minutes. Last, we'll hit the trickiest categories for time to completion, the adventure and role-playing games. Now, if you want to stick with the classic Super Nintendo RPGs like the Final Fantasies or Secret of Mana or Lufia or whatever, I think the shortest overall would probably be Breath of Fire. That one can be done start to finish in about 14 or 15 hours, especially if you take some of those uh, marble threes, I think, to reduce the encounter rate. If you must play a classic and you're short on time, then Chrono Trigger is the way to go, since that can be finished in about 20 hours. But the main game I like to recommend with this criteria is Alkahest. It's a Super Famicom game that never left Japan, so you'll have to play it with an English patch. But it's an action RPG that's a lot like Soul Blazer. You unlock new areas as you progress through each of the eight dungeons. But the thing is, is that it's a very quick playthrough. You can finish this one in three hours. So if you're looking for a fantasy-themed hack-and-slash action RPG that you can complete in one afternoon, then you found it with Alkahest. I'm obligated to mention Final Fantasy Mystic Quest here as well, since that one can be completed in about 10 hours. But it should be noted that this game was made for a specific audience. It's kind of like baby's first RPG, for better or for worse. Some people still really dig this game, though, and it's got a great soundtrack. And hey, this is another one that can be completed in a day, no problem. So I had to make sure I pointed it out. I'll also mention another game I've been kinda down on over the years, Lagoon. For all its flaws, its confusing unintuitive layout, the ridiculous toothpick sword, the fact that you can't use magic against bosses, I have to say that Lagoon is at least a short playthrough at around 3 or 4 hours. Some people still swear by this game, I don't think it's that great, but hey, it's an action RPG that can be finished in an afternoon, and some people prefer that to the 40 hour Final Fantasy type games, so I gotta point it out here. Last, I'll finish up with another Super Famicom game, this one in the adventure category. It's Gunproof Gunman's Proof. You'll need an English patch to play this one, but it's well worth it. Yeah, it's pretty much a Link to the Past clone, just with a Wild West motif, but it's an entertaining playthrough with some funny dialogue, and some of the weapons the game has you using are really a lot of fun. The time to complete this one is around 4 hours, and it's time well spent. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.